Hi, I'm Glenn Jewis. Welcome to episode 46. And this week, for all you compositors, I want to show you how you can first of all make your own pattern and then use that pattern to make a completely unique floor in your pictures. Plus, how we can use textures to make it look all dirty and grunged up. All very, very quickly. Okay, so before we crack on then, this technique I'm gonna show you in this video actually forms part of a three-part series of videos that are recorded way, way down deep in my YouTube channel. There's a series of three videos going through a complete retouch of a picture from start to finish, and it's called Madam Spooky. So if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. But again, before we crack on, like I always do every week, just to say, make sure you click on the subscribe button. Just before this episode came out, we've got we've hit a bit of a landmark with the, uh, the amount of subscribers, so I'm well happy with that. So keep up the good work, subscribe to the channel, let other people know about it. Let's crack on with the tutorial. So let's have a look at the floor then. Now, if we refer back to the original picture, we can see that our floor's got this checkered pattern, which we used to see in a lot of stately homes. It's a traditional old kind of like, floor that they used to have years and years ago. In fact, you can probably still get that now and tiled kitchen floors and what have you. So if we can try and replicate that, because that actually isn't a picture, that's a pattern that's been made in Photoshop. So I want to show you how you can quickly do that. All we need to do is go to uh, File, New, and create a new blank layer. Uh, 1,000 pixels by 1,000 pixels is fine. Resolution's gonna be 240, which is what our picture is now. And the background content's just gonna have a nice white background and click OK. So we end up with this square here. Now I need to separate this square into four squares. So I need a line going right down the middle and a line going right across the uh, center as well. And I can do that really simply by going to View, new guide and in here vertical i'm going to change to 50 percent and that'll put a line straight down the middle i want one straight across the center now so again we'll go to view new guide and change that to horizontal and type in there 50 percent and that gives us our separations now so we've got this line going straight across the middle and it's going straight down the middle so we've got four squares so i need to fill two of these in black and i'm going to use the one in the top left and the bottom right so I'll get my elliptical, no, I'll get my rectangular marquee tool, hold down my shift key and drag out a selection and just drag out this square in the top left so it snaps to those guides there and let go. And just so you know, if, you, if you're finding that your selections don't snap to the guides, just make sure that when you go to the view menu here, where it says snap to, make sure you've got a little tick where it says guides and then you'll be fine. So while this top left selection here is active, we've got our marching ants, I'm going to keep my shift key held down, drag out a selection from the bottom right up to the middle as well. So now we've got two squares here, we've got two uh, different selections being made. I'm going to go to edit, fill, and I'll choose black from the drop down menu and click OK. And we'll go select, deselect. So now we've got this checkered pattern, I now need to define that as a pattern in Photoshop that we can then go on to use and make our floor with. And all we need to do there is go to Edit, Define Pattern, and we'll call this Floor, and click OK. And that is it, that is all we need to do. So let's just close this down now. Command or Control W, we don't need to save it at all. Let's now place that floor into the bottom here. So we're gonna to go to Layer, New Fill Layer and Pattern. We'll call it Floor, again, to keep the layers nice and labeled so we know exactly what does what and click OK, and straight away our previous pattern, the one that we've just made up, comes up. But if you had other patterns you wanted to use, just click on the drop down menu and your patterns you'll find that you've made will be in here as well as the default ones. When we're in here, we can actually scale it as well. You've got a little scale slider where you can drag it up or you can drag it to the left, left or right, make it big and smaller. But we're gonna keep ours just as it was at the 100% of the scale just like so and click OK. Now obviously we need to move it down so I want to get my move tool and drag it down but we could be here forever dragging it down because all that's happening is it's just going to continue making that pattern every place on that layer so it's just going to continue going it'll never end so to stop it from doing that so that we can actually create our floor we need to define this as a smart object so go to filter convert for smart filters and now we can start moving it around a little bit. If I just place it down the bottom here, obviously that wouldn't look realistic. We need to give that idea of the, the floor kind of going away into the distance, away from the camera. And we can do that using the perspective uh, crop within, um, perspective transform, sorry, within Photoshop. Find that by going to edit, transform and perspective. And we get these 
handles drop drawing around now, like, like our crop handles or our transform handles. If I hold down my Option key or my Alt key and click on the one in the bottom left or the bottom right, I'll click and drag out to the left. You can see that it stretches it so that the ones nearer the camera or the bottom of the frame go bigger and the ones at the top remain the same size. But it kind of lifts the floor to give the impression that it's going away in the distance. So I'm going to drag it right out something like that will be fine. In fact, I might just make that a little bit smaller and drag out just a little bit more, something like so. And we'll click the tick at the top there, get the Move tool, and I'm just going to drag that down now to something like that. Now I'll lower the opacity on that layer just so I can see where Nadine's feet are and where that curve of the, the wall is. So it's around about this area here. So I'll just drag it down to around about there looks good. And we'll bring the opacity back up again. Now at the moment, sure, that doesn't look too good, but we don't have to make selections to show the bottom of the dress and Nadine's feet. We can actually just use blend modes. In fact, let's just move that across just a little bit there like so. Something like that's fine. Okay, um, just using blend modes, that's all we need to do. No selections whatsoever. So I'm gonna choose something like overlay blend mode. And straight away, we can start to see there is some difference in there. Let's just drag that there. But obviously at the moment, we can't see through the floor. We can't see Nadine's feet. So all I'm gonna do now is add a white layer mask, get a black brush, make sure that the brush is fairly soft. It doesn't have to be perfectly soft, but fairly soft. And all I'm gonna do now is start painting it away. And we don't have to be too accurate with this because we're gonna be doing some things in a short while that can hide all the little areas that you'd normally pick up on, but I'm not gonna worry about that just for now. So if I zoom in like on her feet, we can paint it off her feet here so we can see the shoes. And the great thing is all the original shadows that we photographed on the original studio shot are brought through as well. You can just see one under a foot here. So we haven't got to worry about trying to make shadows look realistic or anything like that whatsoever. They're all being brought over immediately from the original shot just because we're using that blend mode. So let's continue painting this away here. Painting the pattern off the shoes. If we go too far over, we just need to change the color of our brush to black or to white to paint in or remove. Something like that is good. And I'm just gonna keep working my way around. So anywhere that I can see the pattern shining through or coming through the dress or the shoes, I'm just gonna use my brushes to paint that away. And these areas down here, because we're gonna be adding some extra lighting effects on here, I'm not too worried about that, but I'm just gonna paint it away off the dress like so. And when I've gone too far, change it to a different color brush. So I'm painting a white and just bring that up over there. So I'll just skip forward, carry on doing this and I shall be back with you in a moment. Okay, so all I've done now that I've just jumped forward and I've literally just painted it all off like I started using that layer mask. And just so you know, obviously on the material here, some of the material in here is actually kind of translucent where we can see through it. So all I've done with that bit, rather than painting away at 100% with the brush, I just changed the opacity of the brush down to around about maybe 50% or so, just so it gave that impression of being able to see through it just a little bit. So that's the actual checkered pattern flooring, but we need it to look just a little bit more grunged up because this is a real spooky kind of haunted house kind of feel. So the floor wouldn't be as clean as what this is. So what we can do is we can add a texture to this floor and I've got an ideal texture. Now I've got this one, it's a concrete texture. So let's just double click on the hand tool now to give us full view. And I'm gonna go to file, place. And the only reason I'm placing it is because when I use place, it puts it into the document I'm working on. If I just clicked open, I don't have to drag it from that document into another. And this is just purely done for time saving. So here's what I've got called concrete. So we'll click on concrete and click place. And you'll see that it places it as it would do directly in our document right over the center. It's the right dimensions and it covers all of our picture up. So all I want to do now then, again with my move tool, uh, let's just commit that in there, is get my move tool now and just drag it down so that it covers that part of the floor. But before we do, one thing we could do if we're gonna try and be really, really uh, keep everything technical and keep everything looking right, we could change the perspective on this as well, just like we did with the pattern. So let's just try that. Let's go to edit and transform and perspective. Again, we get our bounding handles around here. Hold down my option key and my alt key and we'll click on the bottom left and just drag it out just a little bit. Just so I suppose it, you know, it's the small things that help. If we drag out the pattern or sorry, the texture here as well, it's all gonna match in well with everything we're trying to put together. So the small things make the big difference. So that's the texture there. Let's just drag it down so it covers the floor. 
like so. Zoom in. And again, we'll just change the blend mode. We'll change this one to overlay. The reason I use overlay, it's just a little bit more punchy and we can see the floor difference there. So now that's with the texture and that's without. Might be a little bit too strong so we can always lower the opacity down so the texture isn't quite so strong. But what you'll also notice is that texture now, like the pattern did, it's now going all over her dress. But because we've actually already used a layer mask to paint the checkered pattern off Nadine's feet and dress, we can use that same, tech, that same layer mask. So I'm gonna click on that layer mask in my layers panel, hold down my Alt key or my Option key, click and drag and it creates a copy of it identical now so it removes it off the dress so if i turn that layer mask on and off we can see there's the texture on a dress and there's a texture off it so that's a really quick way of doing it and the finally the last thing i think i'll do for the floor here is i'll just add like a little tiny bit of skirting board going across the back because this little bit where we can see just a little bit of these squares here where they've been cut off i want to try and make that look a little bit more blended into the picture so i'm going to add a blank layer get my uh, rectangular marquee tool and drag out a selection going all the way across only a very very thin selection drag it down to around about there so it covers that up like so and go to edit fill and we'll just use black like we did with the, when we we're doing the pattern click ok and select deselect obviously now that's going over in a dean like that was before the pattern was and the texture was Let's just use my move tool to drag that down a bit so again we can use that trick where we click on the layer mask hold down our option key of our alt key click and drag and it hides it like so now what we could have done is we could have done all these checkered pattern the concrete and the skirting board all as three separate layers put them into a group and then just done us a layer mask on that group just to hide it all but this is just to show you how you can actually copy layer masks from one layer to another very very time efficient so right that's the floor done let's move on to putting the back wall in Okay, so like I said at the start, if you haven't seen them already, definitely check out the three videos that make up the complete retouch of this picture called Madam Spooky. And it's way, way down deep in the retouching playlist. But there's so much you're gonna learn in there. It takes you from the original out of camera picture. It's a full length shot photographed on gray and then take you through all the steps, adding in the flooring, the retouching on the model herself, the difference in the background, color effects, the whole thing all the way through these three videos. And I think it's about an hour hour and a bit's worth of retouching completely for free loads of stuff there for you so definitely definitely check it out but that's pretty much all we've got time for this week again like i always do thanks again for all the subscribing if you haven't already click on the subscribe button but you're doing a grand job in spreading the name spreading the word about this channel i really do appreciate it because it's the support from you guys that are helping this channel to grow but that's all for this week have a good one and i'll see you next time